Hi, my name is Keith Hazelton and this is the first in a series of video tutorials designed to help you make your own simple layout and then timetable using Albert Ball's wonderful program called Railway Operations Simulator and if you've stumbled across this uh, video on YouTube and wonder where it is you can find it up here www.railwayoperationsimulator.com as you can see from the layout, this is the one that we're going to be building, we're going to start it from scratch again in a moment, uh, trains are designed to be able to enter the system either from point here, entry point A, or entry point B. Now trains from entry point A can either go straight along the double track main line and exit through there, or they can come in from entry point B straight along the line and go through exit point B. And what we're also going to build is a simple terminus, single line terminus, where trains can come in from A, go up here, along here, into the terminus, reverse, and then go back to exit through point B, either by using this line, which is a conflicting junction, or they can go down this line, which has got an underpass. It's actually using the gap um, icons that uh, the program provides with, and it's really there just to show you how you can link uh, pieces of track through gaps and simulate tunnels or bridges etc. We've also got a through station you can see all the tunnels uh, the, the tunnels, <laughs> the signals etc. Okay so we're going to get rid of all this and then we're going to uh, start from a blank page clear all. So there you go. Now the f first thing we need to do from our blank page is go up here into mode build modify railway we've got a blank screen to make life a lot easier when you're designing a railway it's my advice is to switch the screen grid on toggle it on that's just a simple toggle button because each element of track signals stations etc take up one of these little grid squares right first thing we need to do is to lay some track so we click on this button as you notice every time you hover over a button the, uh, there's a little tooltip that comes up and tells you what the button is for. So we want to add and remove track elements. There you go. These are all the various pieces of tracks and signals, stations, etc. that we can build. And obviously we need to start off with some straight track, but we also need one of these, which is a continuation point. Um, these are the points where the trains can actually enter or leave the system. So the first thing we need to do is to put a continuation point say somewhere around there. Now to place any of these elements upon the grid you just need to left click. So select up here left click. Next we're going to build some straight lines and through we go. Now there is no method of clicking and dragging uh, these particular elements so that you can build a long straight piece of track but there is a method by using cutting and pasting which some of you, you may find is slightly quicker so I'll just show you how you can do that if we select this piece of track here then copy then drag it then paste it you can see we've now got two pieces of track. If you want to do another piece just do exactly this. This time you can reselect copy drag it and paste it. So that's one way of designing longer pieces of track. For example if I was going to make a layout that used up the whole of this screen it's probably easier to make a, a length of track um, so long and then just copy and paste it rather than individually clicking on every piece of the track. Anyway we'll do a little bit more just to give us plenty of room to play with and then we need a continuation point but this time with the little dots facing that way because that's the direction which trains are going to exit. We're now going to make the second parallel running track because our our system is going to be double tracked or the main line is going to be double tracked. You can uh, place the track immediately below or next to the existing track but I find 
that it looks better and also it makes it easier if you've got complicated junctions to actually leave one space between the running lines so we'll click on there and we can click on there. Now this is where copy and paste actually can come in handy because what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this whole piece of track copy drag that down there paste and there you go it's done simple right so that's our double pieces of track now the next thing we're going to tell the program is that these four points are entry and exit points they're in fact known as non-stationed named locations which we uh, put in by clicking on this blue square here and we need to put one there one there one there and one there now we need to name these locations and the way we do that is by clicking on this button which is set or change location names now before I do that I'm just going to show you how you can change text and font styles because if you want to insert any text uh, onto the layout then it's best to set the style and the color etc before you try and enter it. It's much easier and less fiddly than then trying to change existing text that's on the system so as far as these ex exit points are concerned we only need them probably at uh, at 8 we don't need anything huge to be able to look at we'll make them bold so that makes them stand out and we'll put them in sky blue or aqua click OK now any text that I input on to the diagram will be in that font style so now we can click on set or change location names click on this part a little box text box comes up here and which I'm going to put in entry A press enter or return and there you go there's entry A this one's going to be exit A this one's going to be entry B and this one's going to be exit B so there you go now you can move text around once uh, it's onto the uh, layout if you think that it looks a little bit neater clicking on this button move text think it may look a bit neater by just moving those underneath you just grab the first letter of the text and you can click and drag on it similarly with that one so now it's on there so there you go we've now got entry A exit A entry B exit B it's a good idea when you're designing your track to go into information track information and click the show button because now if I hover over a track element it actually gives me details about each individual track element for example this is obviously location equals entry A and it also gives me an ID see the ID at the bottom there in this case it's 3420 we'll need to know those numbers when we come to compiling the timetable a little bit later right let's build now our branch line that's going to come off the main line and go up here and terminate up here so we go back into add remove track elements this time we need a 45 degree point there we'll make it somewhere around here now to remove a track element dead simple just right click and then left click the element that you want to insert we need two or three diagonals to come up here then we'll do a 45 degree to straight track there and then we just click away until the end to our where our terminus is going to be there we go and obviously I need to stop or to end the track with a buffer we can find out which is a buffer now that's a gap we're going to look at gaps later don't confuse gaps with buffers they're entirely different things in this case we need a buffer stop which is that so there you go that's our piece of track there what we also need is a crossover junction here to allow trains to reverse in the terminus which is going to be up here and cross over to join the other main line so we need that 45 degree point there we need one diagonal we need to get rid of that piece of track 
and insert that point there. Okay. Now, as I said to you, we're also going to put in um, a tunnel or an underpass here. So, what we need to do is place a 45 degree angle there. We'll then put some diagonals in here. Now, this is where the track this piece of track is going to pass underneath the main lines and reappear on this side of the main lines and this is where the gaps come into play we need a gap that's obviously going in the right direction which is that one so we click on that and we place a gap then we sort of follow it through you see it would, it, it, if we were actually placing the track the first piece of diagonal would go there the second would go there the third would go there so the other end of the gap is going to be in there. This time we go up to here as I said look there, 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 there and it's going to be there. Now the important thing to remember is that the program needs to join up all the gaps as it were and this icon has suddenly turned into a button that says connect gaps so if we click on that I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this on the video but trust me that there is a tiny little red circle that has appeared here and what I need to do is click on the other piece of track that it connects to and it says all gaps have been set so now the program knows that anything that comes down here will disappear through this point and immediately reappear through this point okay let's go back into add remove track elements we'll do one piece of diagonal there then we'll do a 45 degree again to straight there then a piece of straight along here then we'll go back up to here a little piece of diagonal there and now the final point to there so now trains can come in from entry point A into the terminus, reverse, and actually they can have a choice when they come back of either going through this way or indeed going through that way underneath the underpass and joining the main line to go out through exit point B there. So that's all the track laid. The last thing I'm going to show you on this first vid video is how to put the stations in and these are these red icons here these are the platforms, represent the platforms they're going to be named locations we need to make um, a terminus station I'm going to put in a bottom platform and I actually click on existing track in this case it's going to be the buffer and then alongside for two. Now remember when you come to operate the railway trains take up two squares so stations need to be two squares big and just to make it a little bit more prominent we'll put that in there then I'll make a a station down here on the through line oops uh, no, I did that so right click go back see if you make a mistake you have to right click there's no undo button with this back to here back to there there we go we'll also do one above this time and we'll join them up with a couple of concourses bridges call them what you will so they're the two stations that we're going to be using the last thing that we need to do is to give them a name I'll make their names more prominent than the exit and entry point so we'll change the font to say 12 style and we'll put them in green just to look a bit different still keep it in bold keep OK click on set or change location names click on any one of these as long as it's on the actual location itself there's the little box we'll call that terminus and similarly we need to name this and we'll call this through as in through station once again if we want to move our text around to make it look a bit neater we can just click on that button drag that there or straighten that up and there we go right now it's always a good idea um, at various stages when you're designing a layout to make sure that you've saved everything so that uh, if you do make a mistake a disastrous mistake or the computer locks up or whatever you can always get back to where we were so 
we're going to come out of build edit mode and we're going to go into save railway as the option box comes up now what I showed you at the beginning of this DVD was already made but we'll overwrite that and we'll call it intro dev to keep it simple click yes now this layout is saved and we can always come back to it if we make a mistake okay that's the end of uh, part one of the videos in part two we'll look at signals and we'll look at setting up the line directions